Before the heaven and the earth came to existence, what was I? Before the heaven and the earth came to existence, what was I? Before the heaven and the earth came to accident. What was I? Now my friends in the practitioner, practice meditation, emphasize practicing. In the practice, our method, our struggle with the illusion, or struggle with the self attachment and ignore. As same as like the person who swim opposite side of the waterfall. Very difficult. The waterfall, the water very strong. Strong. As same as like the illusion. The same as like the ignore. Self attachment. If person who good swimming, they know, they know the force of the waterfall, they know the force themselves. Like uh, the patriarch always, always said that, we know that ourselves, we know that our enemy have the battle, we win have the battle. But the struggle, about practice in in the way like in the past matters we always meet we always stuck with all of the obstruction obstruction the suffer why feeling or obstruction does the separate husband gain something see something that fears something always raising explanation or raising the illusion talk the patra said that we practice until emptiness or have talk the emptiness absolute emptiness the mind you know like no talk <clears throat> If we have no thought, that means the thought of no, the thought of space, the thought of void, the thought suffer, the thought happy, all kind of thought, even the empty still that the thought. The empty all in the mind, the emptiness of all the thought means that no raising discrimination, no discrimination, no the no reason to talk between the subjective and objective. Like the Alexis Patriarch, you know, also said, we raise the heart. One hand carry the seal, one hand carry the sword. Go out to the battle fight, still in the like original talk, the fundamental talk. Away in meditation, no raising even one talk. That we don't recognize, no way that we don't understand or recognize what the Padra say, what the Padra teach. Because the, the meditation of the through my mean that the no moving up the mind from past up to now and the future, no time on that, no space or voice in that, no calculus on that. Always in uh, <clears throat> 
not moving. Now, because of our discrimination, because of our self attachment, subjective and objective, we we see the wrong thing. We see the wrong view. We hear the wrong ear, hearing, or way in wrong. That's why we have to practice. That's why we struggle with with our but uh, without it's not uh, self attachment. We struggle and we practice until until we trace the the fundamental talk, or the basic talk, the basic talk, fundamental talk that hear the name of self nature, Buddha nature. Be the name of the talk, no discrimination, no subjective and objective. So our practice, the doubt, we, the doubt we have to get the goal of meditation. Without that question, maintain doubt, without the doubt, cannot go back to the fundamental of the original talk, uh, original phase of our set nature, for that nature, to practice. And then we take. Good morning, uh, dear Monata Sangha and all our uh, Zen practitioners. Uh, when we practice meditation, we need to uh, focus on the uh, practice. And the practice is uh, ask the question and maintain the doubt. <clears throat> like this one. It's not the mind, it's not the Buddha, it's not the thing. What is it? It's not the mind, it's not the Buddha, it's not the thing. What is it? And your question need to ask clearly and continuously. And this is a method, a practice is going to help us to uh, go directly into release all the self attachment, uh, such as um, the thoughts of happiness, sadness, and so on. Our uh, worldly consciousness thoughts is just like um, this metaphor of the uh, the waterfall, and um, this basically is so strong that it can take away everything. It, it's. Uh, anything uh, stand in its way. So when uh, we are practicing, we always, uh, we are the upstream, we are upstreamer. We swim against the stream. We, we swim against our own um, suffering. And the practice is we, it's an analogy of, uh, it's a, we do our own battle. Uh, we uh, battle with the uh, impermanence, uh, our afflictions, our problems. And they distract us a lot from our life. Um, it's, we cannot even recognize ourselves when uh, we get distracted by them. And if we uh, let them control our uh, life, uh, as you know, pleasure, uh, 
uh, then we accept them as uh, their uh, them as the, our own friends but they are actually their own enemies and if we don't uh, really have this thought of um, strong determination solving our birth and death uh, and we allow it to continue on this path of uh, worldly consciousness and it's become harder or difficult uh, so the old saying that when we know um, the enemies uh, we able to battle and win um, hundred battles we win hundred battles so so therefore the buddhas and the patriarchs uh, they always try to help us in one way and the other to help us um, to build this really strong strong mind um, so we can go into the battle um, so it's just the old say again that if you know the enemies really good uh, you're able to battle them uh, and always win against them and all the words from the buddha and the patriarchs and wise teachers they always remind us to return to the practice and the doubt is our friend our uh, ally and they are the prasha the seed of prasha and they are the non self-attachment and if we don't uh, realize this uh, we might uh, mistakenly accept um, the thoughts you know uh, that we um, may think they are our own friends and any obstacles in our practice uh, we uh, are based on other conditions uh, we, if we have the strong determination strong trust in the mind uh, in the practice we're able to overcome and in uh, the buddha teaching and and if uh, we in, inherit uh, the buddha dharma body uh, and, uh, and we're able to enter the house of the buddha and we put on the coat or the rope the rope of uh, buddha and the rope here is that it represents uh, the the patience the parameter patient and when you enter the house of the buddha that means that means uh, the house of liberation and the uh, the practice is uh, patience and uh, harmony in the practice so uh, it doesn't matter you know if uh, the buddha i mean if uh, people they try to against you they try to uh, even harm you uh, then this uh, rope of the buddha uh, uh, means that um, you you practice uh, the patient and the third one is uh, when you sit on the um, the seat of the buddha and that's mean when you're able to uh, realize um, the buddha nature so all these skills in teaching in the buddhas always shows us um, the way to trust our own mind and 
the, the diligent practice. So um, there's a saying, there's nothing to hold on to. So this practice, basically nothing to hold on to, uh, nothing to gain. So uh, from the great doubt, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna sell release uh, or automatically sweep out our uh, cell attachment and our own ignorance. And so that's why it's saying that um, you enter you enter the house of the Buddha, you uh, wear the robe of the Buddha and sit on the seat of the, uh, the Buddha. That's mean when you're able to complete your, your journey. Um, so, um, so therefore, these three representations on the path is uh, you're able to see during the practice. Um, so the patriarch say that uh, one punch into the emptiness, uh, break the emptiness, and and uh, the body, uh, the human body is uh, based on uh, the, the day of birth and the day of death, but the the, the Dharma body. Uh, it doesn't have the uh, the date and time, no expiration. And when we practice and we 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 longing for the uh, something to gain, something to seek, and something to fear, uh, and then it's create a lot of uh, thoughts, uh, false thoughts in our practice. And um, right now we in this practice, the, the worldly consciousness is still lead the way in the, uh, on the path. And sometimes the worldly consciousness caught up with the fear of this and that, um, then it, it gonna hesitate, it's not gonna move uh, against the, the waterfall. And we still get stuck in the uh, samsara, the ocean of samsara. And um, if we're able to overcome this, um, you're able to see that um, there's nothing impossible. Um, then you're able to uh, rediscover your own Buddha nature. Um, and this is the practice we're going to face a lot of um, or interact with uh, difficulties, uh, even monastic or lay um, person. So we have to uh, interact with a, a lot of different things, uh, but actually we are uh, interact with this. Uh, it's actually help us to uh, create a friction to grind out our ego and uh, along with our great doubt, and eventually we're able to um, uh, exhaust our, our worldly consciousness, our, our worldly thinking, and we're able to recover our uh, Buddha nature, and we see our true self, and uh, the mind, and the world, uh, basically, um, you're able to see as one, uh, nothing uh, as such, uh, suchness. Um, so if we explain the suchness, uh, it's, it's going to be really hard, uh, but only come through our own practice. So there's no words for suchness. And the basic uh, practice is ask the question and uh, create a doubt. Uh, that's, that's only that's only way we can do. And but we always attach to anything. We attach to the word of enlightenment. We attach to uh, anything that we think uh, it uh, fits up. And uh, when we attach to that, we still on the verge of uh, subject and object all the time, and we're not able to uh, complete our journey. And, uh, and and when we're able to um, 
p r a c t i c e diligently, deeply in the practice, and it creates this analogy of the, the shore. This is the, like the Diamond Sutra, uh, the Diamond Sutra, or the, 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 the sword that, that's so sharp, able to cut the illusion. Uh, it's, sharp, it's too sharp that it's able to cut the hair in one cut. And it cut um, the ignorance, it cut uh, everything, uh, obstruct the way uh, up to the uh, enlightenment. So this is such an analogy that this um, comes from our own practice. And the great Tao is going to it, it, it do just that. Um, so how we practice correctly, um, that is uh, very important. So we have to practice uh, through the guideline of um, uh, correctly. Uh, we have to understand the, the Zen uh, tradition so that way we won't make a mistake uh, in our practice. So that's what I want to share with you today. Um, so at this time, anyone uh, on the Zoom, you know, you can ask a question or share your comment. Thank you. Namo Sakya Muni Buddha. Uh, Miss, please go ahead. Namo Sakya Muni Buddha, dear Thais and monks and nuns and all Zen practitioners. I went to the Zendo uh, yesterday. Uh, I saw this sentence uh, at the Zendo, and you and you happen to explain this a lot, uh, saying that uh, when you serve sentient beings, that means you offering uh, to the Buddha. So can you explain more? So this is uh, saying about the practice and how you practice that uh, uh, able to uh, create the seed of the passion and the, uh, in order to practice to lead to the great Tao is not uh, easy but uh, it's not impossible uh, even you, it's hard but it's uh, doable uh, so that way we're able to leave this sort of uh, samsara so when we serve the sentient beings, that means you serve, uh, we offer it to the Buddha. Uh, this is uh, the practice to let go of the self-attachment. So whatever we do, we always uh, uh, wish for the sentient beings. So when we do for ourselves, we, that's uh, on, based on our self-attachment, something that we gain, something that we seek. So uh, almost all of us uh, uh, get stuck in this. So because of the sentient being, we are sentient beings. We always have to sell. This is my. This is um, this me. This my. This is uh, my uh, cell. So this is no uh, pressure, and we distinguish uh, religions. Uh, tradition and different uh, congregations uh, and so on. Um, so how we are able to uh, use this to practice, to, to use for our practice. So we able to um, let go of the uh, self-attachment. So this is um, the absolute um, teaching and uh, the people like um, uh, the lower levels, uh, when they make a vow, uh, the bodhisattva, bodhisattva vows, um, you need to uh, uh, sac sacrifice for the sending beings. But somehow we we get attached to our, self, our own self. 
and all sentient beings and us, uh, we are the same. And we vow that until the day we we all achieve the enlightenment. So when we do something for others, that means you already do for yourself. And that means you offer uh, to the Buddha. And this is the path to the, uh, the prasyam. So uh, in the novice uh, practice stanza, usually uh, patriarchs try to teach uh, the novice uh, to app apply in their practice, like the Zen, the Zen master Wishan uh, uh, taught, taught about uh, uh, when practicing uh, understand the absolute teaching like the prasna, then there's no mind, distinguish mind or discriminate the mind. Um, otherwise, we're going to mistakenly from one to the other. So when we understand uh, practicing uh serving sentient beings is offer, is also means offering to the buddha so we offer to the ten direction the the buddha in the ten directions so it's not too far away from here it's the, our own buddha nature so we have to realize this is um uh, non-dual uh, practice um, so uh, this is the practice of the novice um, in the morning when you see the buddha uh, may all the sentient beings able to achieve the enlightenment and may may they uh, achieve uh, the buddha dharma uh, when they wash the hand when when I wash my hands, I vow that all sentient beings are able to um, learn the Buddha Dharma and able to find the enlightenment. So from action to thoughts are uh, always uh, for the sentient beings. So when you're able to practice this um, uh, stanza, uh, like the novice, uh, that's also the Zen practice. So um, there's a, a Bodhisattva always go around and uh, tell everyone that, oh, you are the Buddha. Uh, in the future, I I bow to you. I cannot, um, uh, I cannot uh, disrespect you. Uh, and he goes around and always say that to everyone and he get beat up uh, because uh, he says just a crazy thing. Uh, so this is actually the, the practice of the uh, um, the Bodhisattva vow. And when you have always uh, have this uh, true thought, sincerely thought and action, so that way you able to help uh, Sentient beings as you are. So the the practice uh, ask a question and create a doubt. Also do just that. Um, you you are able to put on the into the house of the Buddha. Put on a rope of the Buddha and sit on the seat of the Buddha. So it's go beyond the duality. Uh, go beyond the sadness and uh, happiness gain and loss, uh, being and non-being, and so on. So um, the practice is, uh, the method is ask a question and raise it down. Just do just that, nothing else. Um, continue to ask the question and raise it down. If you're not able to practice this, we need to continue practicing until you know you, you're gonna get the the doubt it's just like you need to try to get the fire going you, you just need to grind uh make the fire make the make it come out with the smoke and the, the fire eventually gonna come after so uh the practice is um uh, you you need to go beyond 
not based on the environment uh, condition, but eventually if uh, we're going to take um, non-abiding uh, with the condition or environment. So uh, in our practice, we say that, uh, oh, I want to do this to benefit others, but actually you benefit your own self and you harm, do harm to other than do, uh, do the benefit for them. So when we see the fear, uh, the failure in ourselves, but this is the seed of the, the success, uh, actually it's going to gain more experience. Uh, so there's a story about the uh, man who owned the horse and he bought this horse for his son. Um, and it's very expensive and um, he, uh, he, uh, his son uh, uh, somehow lost the horse and the horse uh, uh, disappeared and he thought, oh, oh, you know, it's so lucky, it's so unlucky that and uh, a few days later, you know, that horse came back with many other horses and now we are so lucky and we are, and the son, trained a horse, uh, the white horse, um, and he broke his leg. Now it's bad luck. Uh, so at the age of his son, go, uh, go to the trap, and he missed the trap because his broken leg. And now the father say, oh, we are so lucky. And now you see that um, lucky and good luck or lucky situation or unluck, um, unfortunately. So that, that's uh, basically, this is um, based on uh, the condition. It's normal. Uh, and we don't have to uh, suppress anything in our way. In this practice, we just keep moving forward. When we don't have the self, we, we don't have to make uh, anything. To adjust to the self, and if we uh, try to get rid of um, the, the relative or conventional, um, then we we create another big problem. So we just um, practice the way it is. Um, the the Buddha mind is always uh, as such. Uh, our Buddha nature is always uh, quiet and uh, able to give, uh, uh, give uh, the, can manifest uh, as things uh, are. And uh, so this is when we able to uh, realize ourselves. So this is not about try to um, create e e e uh, equality and non-equality. So when we uh, practice uh, the, this phrase saying, um, practice um, or serving sentient beings uh, is serve, uh, offering the Buddha. So when we have this uh, trust in the mind, like uh, Sikh Patriarch, uh, Wei Nan, when he listened to that phrase and he was able to uh, have the realization, when we say trust in the mind, that's uh, when the mind uh, open to uh, anything. And the words is just uh, skillful teaching. And 
and we just keep moving forward. And if we climb the mountain, we just continue to climb, and you're able to see everything. But at you, if at you the uh, uh, if you at the foothill, you're not able to see everything. So you know um, you have to keep going to uh, the the summit the top of the mountain you're able to see all directions and the more you're able to keep going the more uh practice you're able to uh see is itself and and you you're able to experience everything so the main thing here is uh about a practice and that is uh, the, the meaning of the seven sentient being is often to the Buddha. So we are running out of time today. So thank you, everyone, and you may have a good day. Thank you. Bye.